Hi everyone. Welcome to another streamed match of the Striolated Mannequin Mayhem Cup match. Uh, this time we have G Trudat and Danny MQ playing. Um, I am here with Elsie. How are you doing, Elsie? Uh, I'm doing great. Thank you it's good. Asking. It's good. Good to hear. Um, this is the first time that me and you are doing a nice little commentary duo which will be nice and exciting something a bit different for everyone yeah i have commentated with flan before but i uh, say apologize. Before this. yeah no uh, i've, you know, my I've been on the channel before Chop. yeah no 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 it's more my sympathies for um for having to commentate with flan more than anything else so <laughs> um but no it's it's all good um we this match should be quite exciting it's definitely going to have a bit of an impact on the group uh, we already have one person through on this group in floating lakes who who went undefeated in the group won four or four um and then we're, we're sort of battling it out for the the last two spots to go through to the next stage so uh at the moment uh danny's on one win of three and, and sitting in third and and uh g trudat is has only played one match so far which they lost so uh both players this is quite an important win for them um danny should put themselves in a very good position um if they win this but not not 100 percent safe um and uh Gertrude, if they win this has two games then to win at least one more and and would likely put themselves into into that third space so uh yeah it's definitely going to impact the the final results and standings i'm um, looking forward to it i think it'll yeah. be a fun game tonight Definitely. So, but with without that, um, we've already done the flip, and and Danny won that. So I think we'll we'll get started. Danny, do you want to send through the the invite, um, and we'll we'll get this game underway. All right. Good luck to both players. You've got a high quality phone stream this game. All right. So first up, Danny. Let's that see what a happens. Great tray, goodness. Toki yeah, wow. Turn and bond swallow. Yeah, no, it sure is. Um, Danny just sort of flicked away from their cards, but they looked—they didn't look like anything super amazing as a starting hand. There. What? What's your thoughts on those sort of first five there, else? Well, I am just coming off of watching the tier list video, which is on Tuck and Cash, and I've got to say that all of these are not great birds. I think the highest ranked one is Green Heron, which I believe is a tier C, but it's definitely a bird that needs to work in conjunction with other ones. So I think having such a strong tray, it could balance out the fact that their hand isn't great, but it all depends mm. on what these cards they end with. Yeah, definitely. What what do you think of the tray? If you were to pick, um, if you knowing that they don't have the Brant or the Wren, and you had to just pick, um, one of these birds, which one would you pick out of the the three of the Towie, the Turn, and the Swallow? Um, with a starting hand or just on their own? Uh, with with this starting hand, knowing that there isn't anything else working with it. Uh, I'd probably pick Barn Swallow because I saw that they had the Food Web Expert as one of their bonus cards, so that's nice. a guaranteed two points. Yep. Star Best as well, and it's the same power as Foster's Turn in terms of card cycling, but it also gets you points while allowing you to switch out cards. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, it definitely also works with the two of the end of round goals. Oh, I forgot to look at those. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know. I, I, I honestly think the Towie is really strong in this situation as much as it doesn't work for end of round goals because you can kind of get eggs and food at the same time. Um, and I think that I would prefer to get the Towie and the turn. So if I pick the Towie, I would expect my opponent to pick the Swallow and then I can come back for the turn. And then I've kind of got a couple of different things covered in that sort of space. Um, but I do agree with you that I think overall the Swallow is the strongest one of those three. That is an interesting move from Danny. Decided that the starting hand was so bad that they were just going to keep one card. I probably wouldn't have kept any. I probably would have been ditching all five and keeping five food, to be honest, in that situation. 
What's oh, your thoughts yeah. about uh, G G Trudat's starting hand? Well, much better. That's my first thought. <laughs> um, Barred Owl is definitely a strong bird, in my opinion. I'm. That's my main goal in first round is getting either points or three food out of the wet out of the uh, forest. So. Yeah. You can kind of skip the. You can skip aiming for whoa. Oh. There you go. Just went the hummingbird. Okay. That it's is. Be a lot of card draw. Yeah, there is, and and I think the one thing that um, G Truda hasn't quite picked up on here is is the fact that um, they only took Danny only took one um, card, and that by using the hummingbird, you're actually going to be giving them a lot of food when they don't have a lot of food draw. And and wow, we're getting, we're moving quickly here, but Danny's done exactly what I was actually thinking, which is going for the towie, expecting the swallow get picked up, and then picking up the turn straight away. Um, but we'll see well, whether they actually do that. So, what's your thoughts on Paragon Falcon as the first one? Uh, I might pick it up in the last um, turn if it's a, still available, but I don't want to be getting it down too early. But it's a, it's a great bird, being the fact that it's only two rats and it tucks at 100 centimeters um, and it works quite well for this end of round goal as well um, one thing I've also noticed which we haven't commented on is they've got the exact same icon yeah I was just thinking <laughs> it's going to be a little <laughs> difficult with the hummingbird when they're the exact same icon yeah well you, you always just need to know which position you're in in regards to the turns um, and then you can pick it up from there um, but this this definitely has some full tuck abilities here with um uh with with G G setup. So it'd be very, very interesting. I'm not a huge fan of that pickup by by Danny in, in going to the Jupiter Titmouse then. I, I would have much preferred to see um the turn go down and start being able to see what you uh wanna what other options you have. Um, as well as getting the towie down, you you already know you're going to get a bit of food out of the Anna's Hummingbird. You might not need to go up to the forest too often too early, so I'm not a huge fan of that play just there. Especially with the double food in terms of the caching bird, I don't... I'm not a big fan. Yeah. The bird is cute, but that's about the only good thing about it. Yeah, for sure. Definitely cute bird. Look at his little hairdo. Yeah, see, this is interesting. I, I, I would have been totally getting that towie down, um, setting up egg generation. I think they can still get this first end of round goal, though, which is quite a surprise, because that first one being sets is quite difficult to get. But if they now go the towie and then the turn down the bottom, they then still have two turns to, to lay eggs um, or even do one turn and lay eggs and discard a food to, to get that done. Um, I so only thought they might have been waiting on the Towie for to see what other grassland birds they could get, but if they're playing it now, that doesn't make sense with what I was thinking. So, yeah, an interesting play. I, I mean, I still like the Towie now. I just the the tip mouse is still the one that's sort of a little confusing for me. But like I said, this this maybe they were just really um focused on the the end of round goal and that's exactly what they went for which it could be quite useful just getting that early four point lead on that yes so it looks like um g is setting this up to really use eggs and, and cycle through um cards with the barn swallow they, they you know they they got the skimmer which isn't great but they've already flicked that through to cooper's hawk and they could get that down really easily now as well they're both in the running for this first end of round goal, which is yeah, definitely. very unusual. Yeah. I don't oh, wow. know pick cards here. I think oh, they want to... a lot of card draw as a pickup. Yeah, I think they did that purely because they didn't want to tuck the um, hawk that they just got. Um, so they wanted to pick up other cards to be able to do. Yeah. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter which order you're doing it in. We are getting some speed play here. There is no one taking their time at all, which, 
you know, when I'm playing, I appreciate. <laughs> Personally, I'm a big fan of Wilson's snipe. I wouldn't drop a turn to pick it up here, but I just wanted to acknowledge that it's in the tray. Yeah, it's... Look, when it's one food for five points, plus if you happen yeah. to have the food web expert, which they didn't go with, like, being one food for seven points is amazing. And the card draw ability. Only downside is that it benefits your opponent, but it's one of my favorite cards in the wetlands. Yeah, it can definitely be useful, and, and if your opponent already has a really good card draw, um, it doesn't really matter that you're giving them extra cards. So, oh, here comes that. There's that peregrine in the last rounds. Yeah. They are skipping the green heron's power. So, interesting here, I... I, I now hope that Danny is going to discard an egg and lay three um, eggs to to do this. In order to be in the running for the first end of round goal, that's his only option. So. Mm. This yeah, is a right. really difficult first end of round goal, and and they could they're likely both going to be able to actually achieve this, which is pretty impressive. I've gotten it a couple of times, but I think I got lucky with my starting hand. I wasn't picking up cards from the tray. It's very impressive that they've not only won, but both been able to do it and with non-trash bird. Yeah, definitely. That was oh, a, a pick up of the chickadee. Yeah. Really nice. G True Dad's looking at a good forest engine down there. Yep. Just straight up, smash it in there. Get that chickadee in. That's nice. I'm not liking this tray as much, gotta say. Yeah, no, for sure. The um, chestnut collared uh, bird is, is, is quite nice, but it's, it, I'd prefer that more third, fourth round than, than this early. Um, but in saying that, the, the Towie does make it quite easy for um, Danny to get that down if, if they want to. I don't know if I would go for it. I mean, they're they're sort of they're not working towards their bonus card right now, which is something that Danny needs to be aware of. The yeah, long agreed. spot maybe, but it doesn't benefit any end of round goals and you're gambling on a bonus card that you might not have time to pick. Yeah, agreed. I think I would have taken it over the broad winged hawk though. I'm not certain what the play was there. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I, I do like the use of this green heron with the towie. Um, and well, I didn't actually think about that. That's probably what they were thinking when they, they kept the green heron at the start, was actually being able to cycle through that, that grain and change it to whatever they want. Um, so they can now get the peregrine plan. down. That was genius. Yeah. Um, and, and I... you oh. go for it. Okay. I was just going to say that I think the coot would be good for G-Trude at down there. Be able to tuck cards and gain food and get two cards. Agreed. And it works with their Omnivore, right? Even better. It does. Would be a good If you can, I'd actually really like to see them use the stilt to pick up the coot. Um, just makes it so much a more, um, fl more flowing game. They've got the food for a re, they've got the eggs down, they use the stilt, they pick up the coot and another card. Um, happy days. Oh, come on. Do it. Do it. Do it. No! no. Well, they, they still got the, the wood stalk. They got double bonus cards. Yeah, yeah. wonder if they're going to keep both of them or if they're going to tuck one of them in their grassland. That's mm. what I'd think is one of them's getting tucked. I probably wouldn't tuck them. I'd probably draw another lot of cards here. And then, then, then tuck, likely tuck one of those. Um, because, yeah, I think that the Woodstock, for example, is, is really powerful for, for, for G Trudet right now. I don't understand why they aren't taking the coup. Um, I think they've, they're, they're probably thinking they've got enough cards at the moment, uh, but I'm not sure. I think it's, I think it's too late now. If you, if you were going to do it, you kind of needed to use the stilt. Um, get food, put it down straight away so that you're actually using that tucking ability and getting the points. Um, yeah. Now they've already got four cards in their hand. They're probably not really planning on 
on doing that again. It's going to be very ironic if one of those bonus cards draws is the... Um... Bird counter? Yeah. No, not bird counter. The one where you have too many cards in your hand. Oh, yes. Um, the <laughs> visionary leader. Yes. That one. Yeah, people don't like the coot. There was me and Flan um, on uh, a previous video where someone had the omnivore and the bird counter. It became a seven-point bird, and they just refused to play it. <laughs> I don't... I like the coot, fun, honestly. Yeah, for sure. Oh, Painted Bunting. They are getting some bonus cards here. Um, wow. The only the only problem with, with this many bonus cards is you're probably not going to have that many birds down. So if you don't have that many birds down, what other bonus cards are actually going to really work for you? Um, but I definitely think they need to get this Painted Bunting down pretty quickly um, just because you really want a um, second grassland bird to make sure you're getting those three eggs yeah oh they took the rat they're, they're not trying yeah, to get this down for Woodstork. i really would have liked us to, to have seen them to pick up the food there for the the bunting but i'm interested why Woodstork instead of bunting Look, I don't get me wrong, I think the Woodstock will go down, but I just don't think it needs to go down now. Maybe they're just trying to set it up thinking that the, the Woodstock is going to help them for the next end of round goal and they just want to get that down, but, um, you know, if they were thinking that, they probably could have gone with your suggestion just slightly early with the, the coot as well. Oh, the Swanson's oh. Hawk. Is that a roll hunter or a uh, tuck? Tuck. Ah. Yeah, yeah, it's one of the better predators. I'd be getting rid of the Willard. I don't think you need the Willard yeah. at all. I don't know if they're um, happy with their bonus card. They seem to yeah, be yeah I think they're... In the woodpecker, but... I don't think they're... They're not setting themselves up for their bonus card. I'd be getting rid of the Willard here. I think that... Yeah. Um, it's not a bad idea if they get down that um, first five-point um, card so they can get a little bit better food generation and, and, and get some of these cards down, but they don't have... Neither of them... I mean, it's still only round two, but neither of them have a really clear developed plan of um, developing a really solid grasslands engine here. And, and I, I noticed g True that just ditched the painted bunting. They oh, tucked it. I missed um, that. I think they're planning on doing a double play down in the grasslands. Um, I think they're... Is that the the heron that they're That's going the to be... Heron, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think they might be trying to do that um, and really take control of this third end of round goal with, with then having four platform birds. That is an expensive double play. Mm, especially when you're only getting two food per turn. So we've got a fishery manager and visionary leader pick up from Danny, and they've taken fishery manager, which is a guaranteed four points with the birds they already have down. Yeah. Definitely like that pickup. Oh, yeah. pillaged woodpecker. Oh, Burrowing owl. And the brand. Well, a little too late for the brand, in my opinion. Unless you yeah. have taken visionary leader. I think that... Um, the Brant would have worked for, um, G, G Trudat, um, if they didn't already have this play, because it is actually a five-point bird with them having the Omnivore, and that would have set them up with even more cards to be able to f cycle through that Barn Swallow, but I don't think you want that when you already have this plan to put down two more, f um, birds in your, um, Waterlands. It's interesting that as the game goes on, Danny start it's taking longer and longer for them to decide on which card to card at the end. With yeah, that definitely. I I'm really not a fan of G Trudet's there's just a really significant lack of oh wow. Um lack of grassland birds here. I think they're gonna be purely trying to win on, on bird points. Um, 
It's a bird point and an end of round goal play. Yeah, I don't know that you need to go the full triple here. As much as I'm a huge fan of the um, that Waterlands triple play, like I always get really excited if I get to complete that. But normally you almost like require a Raven or a really strong food engine to be able to do it because to get down eight food, that takes four turns if you get the perfect amount of food in your in the, the bird roller. Oh, wow, they get Wetland Scientist. Oh, that's actually not oh, great just because of the Hummingbird. The yeah, Hummingbird's they can't not, get max on that. They but... can't get max. If if that was a, you know, like like your little favorite bird, the, the, the snipe down there, then this would have been even more powerful. But, um, yeah, I still I still think that you don't need to go the full, all, like I said, all three of these things. I think it's going to take too many turns to, to do that. I was just looking to see if we had a uh, friend Groovenstein in chat because of his ridiculous game the other day, where I think both the uh, Aaron and the Egret might have gotten played in his wetlands in the first round. Yes, yes, he um, developed five cards in the the wetland and then then pulled a Franklin skull and didn't know what to do anymore. Um, that was a pickup of the common Nighthawk by G. Trudat, which is not fantastic. No, no. And I think it might be another migratory bird to the left of that. I didn't see what it was. I think so. I'm really surprised G. Trudat hasn't gone with the Borrowing Owl. Um, it's just like a nice egg point play, and I, G. Trudat's missing out on a lot of eggs by only having one bird in the, the grasslands, um, it really would be important for them to get that, that second bird down just to be maximizing the their egg potential there. Do true that's really running out of time on this uh, third end of round goal. Yeah, that that's is a very good point. That is the second bird. Yep, Switch I think they're, just, they're using it to discard to gain extra food. Uh, yeah. But then what, what do you... Do they have it now? So they've got two they've and got a rat. They've got for the egret and the heron, but, but I not... don't know. If they, yeah, they're gonna have to pull one more time and get lucky with the food in the theater. Which yeah, the I I'm not, I, th I think they just need to change. They they need to change tact right here. Um, play the blue heron and the stork and ignore the egret because you're not going to be able to. You're only going to get these birds it. down. Yeah, they, but they're not going to be able to lay they're eggs. They're not going to be able to get them down in time for the. Uh, yeah. They'll get them down, but they won't. They won't get the. They will run out of turns to actually lay eggs on them. Mm -hmm. I think this might be a case of getting blinded by the high bird points in the double play. Yeah, definitely. In this definitely. Case, it's definitely a trap, and. Yeah, I think that at this point that Danny's taking the lead. They got that fer um, Peregrine Falcon down. Um, and yeah, it's the very, very nice. It's got the double uh, Forster's Turning Clark's Grebe in the wetlands, which is them cycling through four or five cards a turn, depending on egg yeah. discard. And they've also at three birds for their fishery manager, so they find one more fish bird, and, and it's a nice eight-point bonus, which starts making up for the fact that they're they're missing out on the their first bonus card. And that is the triple play from G. Trudat. Yeah. Large bird specialist kind of helps a little bit there, but... Yes. They qualify for the first... The first tier on that one, luckily, so it mm. wasn't a complete waste. Yeah. But I'd argue with the amount of turns that they just went through. I don't understand the goose. I, I don't. Don't. Uh, more? No, actually, I do. It's a pure deny because of the tower, you right? Oh, you have to just yeah. pick it up, to, even though you don't intend to play it. Um, Going I right think... under the barn swallow. Yeah. Um, get that cowbird down. Get some free eggs, and just then lay eggs for the rest of your turns, right? 
And they do have the bull nest to take the eggs from the cowbird, which is good. Definitely. I don't know. I don't think they've set themselves up very well for this last round. We no, don't I don't think so either. Birds on their hand. Their grasslands isn't strong on its own. They can get the cowbird down and be farming eggs from that while they have to pull from more food if they're trying to get something down, but... It's one of these boards where you look at it and you just can't see where the points are coming from. Yeah, and especially now that the woodpecker's gone down, that the um, cowbird just doesn't seem as strong. What are they going for food here? They already had the food for the cowbird. Cowbird's gone. Oh, uh, what? Um, I don't know what they're planning on putting there now. They they. I think they're going for the goose. They are actually planning to play the goose. They've got four grain. They're going to use two grain to, to play the goose. And then they're going to use the last two turns to, to use eggs to um, discard the grain and, and tuck those cards. I think that actually does get them more points than the cowbird. Probably, especially with the woodpecker play. Um, I think that there might be... Yeah. I'm interested to see what Danny does here for the last couple of turns. I really think that, to be honest, the, the strongest play is likely going to be just laying eggs for the last four turns. But it looks like they want to get down this Ganyal or pick up cards. Wow, this is... I think this is a little bit late to be... I don't think... <sighs> Are they potentially trying to get that um, bull nest goal? I think they're trying to get the bolness goal combined with the fishery manager with something oh, like the then. puffin. <laughs> what a pull. Um, but, I mean, one, that was a bit of luck. Um, discard the grain, get a fish. Yep. yep. There is one fish in there. Chickadee gone. Swift gone. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not a huge fan of that though. That like one, they got really, really lucky on getting the puffin, but um, I still think it's going to take a few turns here to balance it out. I, I really think the safer option and, and the more points option would have just been laying eggs. You're likely going to get the tucks through with your peregrine falcon as well. But where is the fun in just laying eggs for five turns straight? Fun is in winning. <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and no they more fish. Have, they potentially have a um, four point four point three. <laughs> they have a four point four is potentially yes. if the hawk works. And they can play the puffin as long as they get any two food out of the feeder because they've got they had a fish and two grain to start with. So hundred percent, hundred percent. I'd probably only consider this a um uh oh. two and a two and a bit point um forest just because you are giving um one point to your opponent in that that woodpecker as well um which i think you have to take into account true and the hawk is unreliable yeah um especially you know those rolling tuck ones mm -hmm. this game is getting absolutely smashed through though this has been at record pace yes all right. Well, time for another one, too. We really would. Too bad this one's a best of one. Mm, yeah. Oh, rats isn't too bad there. Rodentologist. That's guaranteed four points. Yeah. You just, you just say thanks for that. Yeah. Thanks for the four points. That's bonus. So are they now going to play the, the hummingbird as well, I think, to, to get the bowl nests? Yeah, they need to play the hummingbird to get the bonus, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, Danny do that now because they've got the food for it. Although they don't have how many turns has Danny got left? Just the one. one. Yeah. Oh, they don't have the eggs though, do they? Oh no, they do. They've got three eggs. That's fun. I was just wasn't paying attention. Yeah. So that's a that now is a um, seven point play, which is worth more than them actually laying eggs. Yeah. But they had to get so lucky to get that puffin to be able to actually do this play. Yeah. But all's well that ends well, hey? Yeah. 
I can't remember who won each end of those end round of calls. <laughs> well, they tied the first one. Yeah. Danny definitely won the last two. Yes. Alrighty. Danny takes the early lead. Third points than I was expecting. From good trigger. Lots of bonus cards from both. Not many eggs. I think the tux. might be able to fix this with the tux. Oh, yeah, wow. Look at, that. look at that. That tuck. Right at the end wow. there. And one of the puffins is one. I could have called that. Yep, yep. A purple puffin one. Good call. <laughs> Good call. Um, but the person that, finally right. That's it. But the, the, the person that played the puffin didn't, unfortunately. Um, Aww. Mm, mm. Oh well, let me let's bring them back in and see if they want to say anything. Well, Jeez. one of them. And then you started like playing all these crazy words, like whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> hey, G, how you doing? I'm good. Am I on mute? You are unmuted. You're you're back on the stream. Awesome. You are talking. Hi, guys. Uh, getting a FaceTime call. Hello, Sorry. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> how was that? Oh man, it was good. It really. I had no idea what the outcome was going to be until the very last. I think Danny, the past couple of times we've played, has done that every time. Yeah, it's definitely um, made some some plays that were, you know, gambled and and you know they actually got some quite a lot of points in those last two turns with some of those plays with their bonus cards. So it really sort of bumped up that score, but. Yeah, there was some. It was back and forth. You did really well. Scored ninety three, which is good. Those those tucks really came through for you in the end. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I know the Atlantic puffin is like my favorite bird. So when they <laughs> played that, I was like, "That's my death sentence." I know it. But... <laughs> Your favorite bird you thought was the death rattle. That doesn't sound like a favorite bird to me. You know, I, that should be. Well, it's a... just so powerful. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It's a. It's a very nice bird to play. So. But well done. Thank you to both of you for being on stream. Um, really, really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for having us. No worries at all. Well, we'll, we'll call it there and um, well done and, and good luck for the rest of your games. All right. Thanks. Bye, guys. Thank you.